Hello, hello to a video that all of you have uh, wanted for a very, very long time. So today I'm finally filming it. But oh my gosh, before I start filming this video, I want to share something with you that has been a mind blowing uh, discovery of mine. And you probably all will know about this because it's absolutely not anything crazy. It is nothing very hidden or special, but I didn't know about this until I found out about this. And then I was completely mesmerized. I have quite a fear of having bad breath. For me, that's a big no go. Uh, so I'm constantly either chewing gum or just making sure that you know, like I, I, I smell good, sis, you know? And sometimes you can't tell on yourself. Uh, I've never really been told that I have bad breath, but as also an actress, which again comes into the theme of this video, but I always get very self-conscious that my breath will stink. <laughs> and you know, we're humans. There are definitely times when your breath could potentially stink because we eat things throughout the day, we drink things, and sometimes uh, uh, they don't leave the best uh, breath uh, quality. The point of this is that even though I'm very anal on uh, brushing my teeth to the point where my enamel is literally like falling off, which is terrible, I need to invest in an electric toothbrush. And I'm flossing as well, but I still get like shook about the fact that, mm, I don't know, I, I just, I'm, I'm very very like scarred about potentially having bad breath. So anyway, I discovered that there's such a thing as a tongue cleaner. Like literally, why did I not know about this? There's a tool that scrapes bacteria off of your tongue. Okay, first of all, that's gross, but I'm glad that there's a tool for it. I didn't even know that bacteria was collected on your tongue and then it just lingered on there. You know how sometimes your tongue can look very white? Well, I stupidly, very stupidly thought that that just meant I was like unhealthy. I don't know why, it's like a myth. I think I grew up thinking if your tongue is pink, then it means you're healthy. And if your tongue is white, then it means you're unhealthy. But I was always like, I'm sure I'm pretty healthy. Like I, I'm, I'm sure of it, you know? If there's anything I'm sure of, I think I'm, I'm, I eat pretty well. Well, but maybe there's like an underlying condition I just don't know about, which I probably should check out if that was the case for all these years of my tongue being white. Turns out it's just bacteria that comes from food and drink and everything you consume throughout the day that's just lingering on your tongue. I know people use toothbrushes to kind of clean their tongue with, but I never really saw the point in that. I was like, what was the point? And like, it doesn't really do anything. So when I found out that that's what that white stuff was, I literally was so disgusted. I couldn't believe it. So I immediately went out and bought a tongue cleaner because I learned that there was something that cleans your tongue. This is my tongue cleaner. Why am I like, what? This is, see what I mean? These are my videos. Like I will sit here and talk to you guys about tongue cleaners, but you know what? These things are things in life that matter, okay? Like if I was sponsored by a tongue cleaner, I would be so proud to share this with you guys because I truly believe in this. It's not sponsored, I wish it was. This one's from DM. So it literally just looks like this. They have different ones. And by the way, if you already have a tongue cleaner or you know about this, then I'm sorry that I'm so excited about this. And to you, it's probably just like, a tongue cleaner. You just use it to scrape this white stuff off of your tongue and it's absolutely disgusting, but holy cow, it's phenomenal. She's still not where I want her to be, but she's getting there and she is so much pinker now, like a girl. Sorry, this is weird. I am so proud. Anyway, I'm gonna shut up and start the video because I've been talking about this tongue cleaner for almost five minutes and that's not okay. So I'm gonna talk about acting, you guys. You guys have been asking me so much to tell you about my acting experience, my background in acting, how I kind of got to where I am now. I wouldn't say I'm in a fucking incredible place, but I'm in a pretty good place and I'm in a way better place than I was last year, for example. And that's the thing with acting. It's very unpredictable. I mean, this year I could be doing something incredible and then the next two years I could be doing nothing. And that's why this career is very risky and it's a career that a lot of actors do give up on because they're like, I can't provide for myself this way and it does or can make you uh, very miserable sometimes when things aren't the way you want them to be. I think I'm gonna do this video in parts because there's so much to this that I cannot do this in one video. Otherwise this video will be like three hours long and no one wants to watch a three hour video of me talking about acting. So I'm gonna do it in parts and I'm gonna first start just to talk to you a little bit about what it requires to not become an actor because literally anyone can become an actor. I mean, it's a fact, anyone can. You do not need to have experience. But to basically get an agent because most of you wanna know how do you get an agent. So I'm gonna mainly focus on that, but there's so much to it that I'm gonna just try and cut it short so that it's not 
too long. I'm gonna first start off by telling you a little bit about my background in acting, and then I'm gonna get onto how I got an agent and how you can get an agent. So I have been into acting for forever. Like I grew up being obsessed with it. It's just something I've been very interested in and I've never really been interested in anything else apart from YouTube and having a channel and making videos. But I kind of relate that to acting in a way because it's content creation, it's creating, it's filming. It's wow. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of in the same industry a little bit not really but you get what I mean I went to mm, three different acting schools now this is not necessary okay there are some great actors who have never gone to acting school or done an acting course I mean most have done something but there are some that have never done it so do not think that you need to have an acting degree or pay loads of money for an acting course in order to become an actor that is not true however it is very very helpful for you as an actor to build your toolkit of gorgeous to be so cute to be a better actor for yourself to learn new techniques that can help you along the way etc etc so i went to a acting for film course for a year in new york that was my first ever acting thing i did like proper acting course and that was when i was 18. i cut that short though because i got accepted into university in london which was a acting uh, degree. I did a BA in acting in global theater, but it was a university for um, like everything. It wasn't like a drama school. I applied to a few drama schools. I made it to the last round for a few of them, but I just didn't get accepted. And that's okay because, you know, it doesn't mean anything. It really doesn't mean anything. Do not be discouraged if you don't get accepted into RADA. Like you're still a fucking good actor. Okay. I promise you. I got accepted into Regents University, which is a whole round university. And I did three years there of the acting for global i think it's called something different now they change it every year do i recommend it uh mm -mm. I mean, I had a wonderful experience, but the thing I got most out of this university experience was the friends I made. Did the entire university bring me somewhere further in life? Absolutely not. I obviously learned a lot, but did I get acting opportunities from that university? No, okay, no. A lot of drama schools will claim that they bring agents to your final performances, which they did, but we had to source the agents ourselves and the ones that came weren't really all that great and they weren't really signing anyone so it was it just no so don't fall for this drama school trap unless it's rada if it's rada then yes go do do what you got to do so in a sense yes going to a top drama school can be very beneficial to be discovered i guess by agents but not everyone can get into a top drama school and that's absolutely okay that does not mean you're not going to make it please do not think that i then also went to the stella adler academy in new york afterwards uh, i think like a year or so later i went uh, i was supposed to do a three-year course there but i cut it short to one year because a lot of the stuff we were learning there i'd already learned in london and it was expensive it was time consuming and i just didn't want to spend another three years of my life learning stuff that i already knew the only difference was the adler technique which i absolutely love but that was like once a week so i was like okay not worth it so i flew back to london and that's where i kind of started my acting career, if you will. Uh, I started looking for agents, et cetera, et cetera. And here we're gonna get into how you can get yourself an agent. So first of all, please be serious that you wanna be an actor because there are so, so, so many actors who wanna be professional actors, meaning they wanna actually be pay getting paid for their acting. And they work fucking hard to become this, okay? I know this and they know this. So if you just kind of want to be an actor because you think it's cool and you want to be famous and you think it's fun, then it's not good enough. You need to want this. Like you need to want this. This needs to be the priority in your life, okay? You know, if that's you, if that's you, continue watching. If it's not, then it's probably not the right career choice for you because it's a career, it's not a hobby, okay? Moving on from that, how do you get an agent? So I'm gonna go through the steps of what you need in your portfolio to even apply to agencies because maybe you know this already and if you do great that's awesome by the way Ocho is laying on me it's fabulous maybe you already know this if you don't know this I'm gonna go through it because I think this is very important because without this you can't really get an agent. So like any other job in the world, you need a CV, you need a portfolio, you need proof of what you can do, what you've done already, et cetera, et cetera. We're gonna start off 
with your headshot. Now this is probably the most important thing when it comes to acting because acting is really all about what you look like. Sadly, but it is. It's like you're gonna play a character. So, you know, casting directors, they need to know what you look like and if you fit the character description. So the first thing any casting director looks at is your images, what you look like. So you want your images to be really good. You want them to be super professional. You want them to look really great. And the most important thing is you want them to look like you. You want your headshots to look exactly like you so that when you walk into that room or you tape that self tape of you, it looks the same. You know, you don't want to look different in your pics. You don't want to look like super edited or whatever. You want to look like you, you're a real person. You know, this is not Instagram. This is not Facetune. Like this is acting and you are playing a character on screen that looks like an actual human being. I paid around, I think I paid around like, I want to say 300 pounds for my headshots and you get around like five, six, I think. Now that's a lot of money. I a hundred percent agree, but it's an investment into your future career. So if you're serious about this, then you're going to need to spend some money to get good quality material. I'm not saying you have to spend that much money, like there are definitely plenty of talented photographers who probably charge less, but you know, I was like, I want really good ones. Like I, I'm, I'm gonna put pictures up of my headshots and these were actually taken like, I wanna say like three or four years ago now. So it was a long time ago. And with headshots, you are supposed to update them every few years because obviously you grow, you your looks change, you develop, things are different. But I've asked a lot of people on their opinion and you guys please feel free free to state your opinions down below, but I think I look pretty much the same on my headshots as I do right now. Like I wouldn't say I've changed too much to the point where I need to change my headshots. I've kind of left those. I'm happy with them. My hair was a lot shorter, but I have some where my hair is like put up or behind. So you can't actually see the length. So it doesn't matter too much. But if you go and like dye your hair pink and get a pixie cut or whatever, then you need to get new pictures because that's a dramatic change that, you know, you, you need to make sure you have new pictures for that. So yes, number one, your headshots. Very important, most important part of the entire thing that your agent will need to see. The second thing is your showreel. Now your showreel is basically like part of your portfolio. It shows off videos, uh, clips, your acting experience. Like if you've been in a movie, if you've been in a TV show, if you've been on stage, like you're gonna wanna put that in your showreel in video format to showcase your talent. If you haven't done anything professional, don't freak out, it's super fine. For the first like few years, like I was just putting student films and like little things. You can even do monologues if you want. I never did that, but I know a lot of people will just do a monologue and put that into their showreel. So whatever you can to just show off your talent. Here, languages as well is really good. If you speak two languages, three languages, languages, for multiple languages, if you speak a lot of languages, make sure that you show acting in all of those languages because that can really benefit you. Like languages is a huge thing. Like I mean, right now I'm in a Bulgarian TV show and I mean, if I didn't speak Bulgarian, this opportunity would never ever show up. So, you know, people can say Bulgarian is a useless language, but hey, I've just proved them wrong. It's actually benefited me really, really well that I know the language. So I'm very, very gra grateful for my parents for teaching me the language. It's always good to know two languages at least. So I highly recommend learning a second one if you haven't already. So that's your showreel. The showreel shouldn't be like over two minutes in my opinion, two minutes max, because no one wants to watch two minutes of a stranger they don't know. You want to show your best bits. And yeah, that's pretty much the showreel. There's so many examples. Just. Google like acting showreel of someone. You can even check mine out if you want just to see and get an idea of what it should look like. Then you have your CV. This is the written CV. Here you basically just state everything you've done so far. You know, if it's theater, if it's screen, if it's, um, that's, that's all there is, theater and screen. I was gonna say film and TV. Those are two are different. I'm just gonna put my example up so when I'm talking about it, you guys can get a visual. So you have your height on there, very important. Your eye color, your hair color. Don't put your age though. Whatever you do, never put your age on your CV. It's a bad move, okay? Because you want the casting director to envision you in any role that they can. So if you put that you're 40, and then, you know, the casting is for a 30 year old, they might instantly think, oh, she's too old, even though you might actually look 30, but because they see a number on the page, they could instantly just be like, mm, no, she's too old. You know, so I'm just, I'm just saying like, it's never a good idea to put an age. So never ever include your age, unless you're specifically being asked, which doesn't really happen, but just don't do it. Then comes the part of how do I get the agent? I have all this wonderful material. I've collected everything. How do I actually reach out and get an agent. This is the hard part and the shitty part and the part that's really not easy. This takes time. It takes research and it takes effort. You're literally going to have to sit 
sit down and do your research. You're gonna have to create a Excel sheet or like a Word document, whatever, of all the agents that you can find in your area and you're gonna have to find direct email contact and you're going to have to write many, many emails asking them to be your representative. And you're not gonna hear back from like 99% of them, okay? Especially the top ones. They're not gonna reply to you, okay? But you're still gonna try. And you're going to aim for smaller boutique agencies because those are most more likely to reply to you and those are actually better for you as a smaller actor, a what, less known actor. You want an agency that's smaller that will actually make the effort to try and find you castings. If you're stuck in a huge agency, they most likely will forget about you. Your cover letter needs to be short and sweet. You know, you're introducing yourself, you're asking them that you would love for them to be your representative. And then you are just letting them know that you've attached headshot, showreel and CV. That's it. You don't want to start off by telling them what you've done and how successful you are because they can see all that in your showreel and in your CV. So you don't want to repeat yourself in the email because if they open an email and it's like three paragraphs filled with info, they're probably going to click off that straight away because I even would. It's too much to read, no one cares, no one knows you, no one cares what you've been in. They just wanna see your CV where it's all nicely written, neat, structured, and pleasing to the eye. So keep that in mind, don't overload people with information because honestly, they don't care. They really don't care and it's sad to say, but it's true. No one really cares about you. No one cares about me. Uh, it's just, it's the harsh reality. That's it pretty much on how to get an agent. You just wait for replies and then if they reply to you, they might ask you to do an audition for them so that they can actually see your acting with some material that they give you. Then you will do a call. Uh, they'll get to know you, see if you're the right fit, then come the contracts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But then you've pretty much got them. So that's how to get the agent. This is not an easy process. Do not get discouraged if it doesn't happen for you the first time around that you send out emails. I have literally heard back from only a few of the ones that I've sent out. I got my first agent in London. It was a very, very small agency and they weren't even based in, I think they were based in Cardiff and they had like an office in London. It was like a husband and a wife. They were running the agency and it was a tiny agency and they were providing with all the castings, but they sent me so many castings. Like it was crazy. I was getting castings every day and it wasn't maybe the best castings. I didn't love them all. And there were a lot of castings and a lot of them were for things that I like ads and things that I wasn't even comfortable with and I didn't want to do them. Uh, so I would just politely reject and be like, no, thank you. But at least they were sending me castings and they were constantly on it, you know? Another thing is you wanna be on a um, website like Backstage, Spotlight, Mandy, like there's so many and you need to be precise about what you wanna be on because they cost money to be on these platforms. They have one in Bulgaria as well. I think it's called like, oh, I don't know. I'm gonna lie to you now, but I think it's like casting.bg or something like that. So if you are in Bulgaria, you can look into that one if you, you know, wanna stay local and stuff. But you know, all of these platforms, you need to pay yearly to be on them. I'm on like three at the moment and they're pretty expensive and I, it hurts me every time I have to pay because I don't get too many castings from them, but you never know. And if you're based in the UK, you need Spotlight. Spotlight is literally like the number one there. You need to have it without question. To get on there though, you need an agent. So get your agent first and try and prove to them that they should be your representative by showing them your work that you already have. So let me think if I'm missing out on anything else. I mean, there's so much more, but this video is already 22 minutes long. So I said I'll do this in parts, but I'm trying to think like, if there's anything else that I've missed out to tell you guys, to find out by the way, you just literally go to Google. You just go to Google and type in like acting agencies London. Literally that's 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 what you do. Or you find actors who you like love that have like, you know, grown a little and you check out their background, who their agent was. Maybe you reach out to their agent, you know, actors who are similar to you. That's a really good one. Find actors that do work that you would love to do or have a similar look to you maybe even, or maybe not a similar look, but like a similar vibe and then look at their agency, who represents them. Could you also be a fit? I have an agency now, an agency, I'm with an agency, I don't have an agency, I have an agent in Bulgaria, in uh, South Africa, and in London. Well, my Bulgaria and London one is one agency, but they have offices in both. I actually canceled my contract with my old agency and now I'm with this one, so it just works a little bit better. You gotta be like spread out as well and have many options. <laughs> uh, so my South Africa agency, I actually connected through a friend that I knew 
she introduced me to them and I flew out there and we signed and everything and, and I'm also a model with them as well. So it's like a two in one thing. I don't get much work from them at the moment because after the whole pandemic hit, like tough for me to get work <laughs> from here to Cape Town. But when I was there, I got work there. I did a documentary there as well for a German TV, which was so random in South Africa. But it happens, I'm telling you, these things, they happen. They're random and they happen. The Bulgarian agency, the way I got it was actually like just reaching out to them. Actually, one of my followers on Instagram told me about this agency and said, I'm not sure if you know about this, but just in case you're curious, here's this agency. And I reached out to them on email and Instagram. I reached out to the uh, agent who is this, a guy called Julian Kostov and I reached out to him on Instagram and I was like, hey, introduce myself, told him a little bit about me and I didn't hear back for like a month so I thought he just wasn't gonna see it, you know what I mean? But I purposely messaged him on Instagram as well as email because a lot of agents don't see all of their emails. I reached out to him before he kind of blew up from Shadow and Bone and I knew that was in the making so I was like, I need to reach out to him like now because once he gets like a shit ton of followers, like he's not gonna ever see my message. But I didn't hear back from him for like a month and I forgot about it even. I was like, okay, whatever. And then a month later he replied to me and I was like oh shit so yeah he replied to me he uh, asked me to send over my stuff and I was like yeah I've sent it but here's a resend uh, check it out um, and then he liked my work so he was like we'd love to represent you here and in London if you want and the rest is history you know I'm with them now and yeah uh, they don't send me too many castings though I'll be honest about that and the film that I'm in now which I'll end this on note on because it's 25 minute video and I'm just not about that life the TV show that I got now I actually did get the casting from my agency uh it was from a friend of a friend who knows someone on the show in my opinion a lot of castings and roles that people get actors get are from people that they know it's like networking networking is huge in this industry so most of the time it's like you know someone who knows someone and that's how you get the casting and potentially get the job that's probably the best most direct way and that's why when you're on a set or meet other actors etc you need to network with them because that is honestly the most successful way of getting the job in the end but again it's not the only way it's just a very tough industry and uh it's also a lot of luck and it's a lot of being in the right place at the right time and meeting the right people and waiting for your time to shine because your time will come i promise you if you want it this much and if you work hard your time will come okay and everyone Everyone's time is different and everyone's role is different and everyone's character is going to be different and everyone suits something different so yes anyway i'm going to finish this video off right here i hope that this video was useful to you guys i'm going to do a part two to get more in depth because this was very long but i want you guys to get as much info because i wish other actors did this i wish there was more actors that actually spoke so freely about castings and agents because it's so hard on us you know like actors who are a lot smaller and not as well established yet we want info and we don't get it and I don't know if this was helpful I hope it was this was a very like beginners at acting if you're already past this whole stage that I'm talking about in this video then let me know and I can talk a little bit about more of the in-depth stuff you know of like after that and, and stuff like that and how you even do self tapes how do you like audition what's the process like let me know down below if you're interested in further videos about this and I will try to make some more I hope you have a lovely day that's the vlog for now uh, sending you lots of love and and happiness and joy and success and I'll see you next time don't forget to subscribe if you haven't okay we're trying to reach a thousand here we need it okay love you bye